Hi and welcome to this video which is looking specifically at the 95% confidence interval for the population mean uh, within the inferential statistics course. So in this video we're just going to revise how to work with the 95% confidence interval for the population mean which is part of the overall inferential statistics section in the Leaving Cert Maths course. So before revising this topic, I would strongly advise that you've already revised Z scores and you're happy with those. Um, I've linked a video below where you can revise Z scores before you get started. And also just to let you know, there is a video which covers the complete inferential statistics course and that's also been linked in the description below. So let's talk about 95% confidence for a second. So for the leaving set exam, we're just, we're just going to focus on 95% confidence. All questions relating to samples will include that we're dealing with 95% confidence to make the mathematically correct. However, we will never have to deal with any other confidences. Okay, so don't panic. A lot of students will often ask, but what happens if it says 99? And the answer is it won't. Okay, as you want to study statistics um, in more detail, you'll see other things appear, but for the moment we're sticking to 95% confidence. Now, these are not the mathematical definitions of 95% confidence. This is just a way to help you to grasp what's going on. So, when we talk about 95% confidence, this can be very roughly translated as a 95% chance my information is correct. So, 95% chance I'm correct. We then will see 5% significance. So this is just another way to say 95% confidence and roughly translated, it means a 5% chance that my information is incorrect. Okay, so think of it this way. If there's a 95% chance I'm right, there's a 5% chance I'm wrong. And that's basically what the 95% confidence and the 5% significance are saying. One is saying just the same thing as the other, just in a different way. The margin of error that we looked at only works for 95% confidence and dealing with 95% we use a Z score of 1.96 which we would talk about as rounding to 2 with regards to the empirical rule but we are a lot more accurate now we're actually going to 1.96. So one question that often comes up from students, um, as we're starting out in inferential statistics, they'll go home and do their homework and they'll come back and be like, oh, I was just checking 1.96 in the log tables, so this page 36, 37. And they said, when I looked up 1.96, I didn't get 95%, I got 97.5%. So you can see it here boxed in red and that's true 1.96 does say 97.5% or 0 0.9750. So where is our 95% coming from? Well what I would do is I would draw your attention first to our picture here at the top. So if that Z score was 1.96 what that's telling us is 90... Oh, I said 95, that's not correct. Based on the tables, they've actually said 97.5% is here, which means then in this tail, there's 2.5%. Okay, so this is what we would consider to be a one tail test. We're talking about just one tail. However, when we're doing our hypothesis testing and our confidence intervals, so any of this work in inferential statistics, we're actually going to look at a two tail test. So our tail looks, or our, our um, normal distribution looks something like this. So because we're not taking either tail, um, and we just figured out in the last go that the one on the right was 2.5%, because the normal curve is symmetrical, the bottom, what's less than negative 1.96, will also be 2.5%, and we end up with this two-tail test where there is 95% of the data between negative 1.96 and positive 1.96. So we're always going to talk about this in terms of a two-tail test, not a one-tail test. So just to be aware of that now and have this kind of image in your head. A lot of things we're going to do is going to relate back to this specific image, the idea of 95% in the middle and the 2.5% either end. So that's the 5% incorrect the five percent significance so let's talk about a little bit more about working with samples so when we work with samples we will have different notation to distinguish between samples and populations so mu 
the Greek letter M is the mean of the population, while X bar is the mean of the sample. So that's just pronounced X bar. So P is the proportion of the population. So just remember, proportion is the overarching term that means fractions, decimals, or percentages. And P hat then is the proportion of the sample. So if I didn't specifically want to say what fraction of people, I might say what proportion of people. It means that we're kind of open to giving our answer in decimal form, percentage form, or even fractional form. Uh, the standard deviation for the sample and the population will be the same for all questions we encounter, and this is given as sigma. So not to get too bogged down in that side of it. Um, there will be a slight uh, difference, and we'll see that as we work through one of the examples, but they will not call it standard deviation, and they'll call it something else. So when you see sigma, or when you see standard deviation, it is sigma. It doesn't matter if we're talking about the population or the sample. So let's talk about the 95% confidence interval of the population mean. Now, I've highlighted the word mean because for this, um, there are two confidence intervals. So we'll have a second one in, um, in another two slides. So just be really clear that this time we're talking about the mean. So using the information we know about the sample mean, X bar, we can create a 95% confidence interval for the population mean, mu. So let's think about what that means. 95% confidence interval. So I'm going to create an interval, so two numbers, um, where I am 95% confident that my population mean sits between them. Or the probability of my population mean sitting between these two values is 95%. So this gives us a good indication. Remember I said earlier that actually when we use a sample, we are not going to be as accurate as the population mean. So it's not okay to say that the sample mean will be the same as the population mean. However, we could say the sample mean, give or take some, will give us a good estimation for the population mean. So the range of values um, that we are 95% sure that the population mean mu sits between. So to create this range, we're going to use what's called the standard error of the mean that we find on page 34 of our log tables. So it's this one here, standard error of the mean. So it is sigma of x bar, so that is the mean, equals to sigma standard deviation all over the square root of n. Now, that square root of n is hopefully something that you recognize. It's linked to the margin of error. Now, when we use the standard error of the mean, it effectively replicates standard deviation for the sample. So when we deal with standard deviations, we want to know, well, how many standard deviations are we talking about? When we talk about 95% confidence, we are talking about the Z score 1.96. And remember that the Z score means how many standard deviations. So this is what we're going to have. We're basically going to start with X bar, which is our sample mean, give or take plus or minus 1.96 because we're in 95% confidence. So we're talking about 1.96 all the time. And then we put the standard error of the mean. And that is how you create the confidence interval of the population mean. Now, I'm going to rub this out because that is going to give us a plus minus, but I'm going to give you something a bit more eloquent and it's going to look like this. So it's X bar minus 1.96 sigma over root N is less than or equal to mu is less than or equal to X bar plus 1.96 sigma over root N. Now, some questions also come in, um, depending on what book you're using, you may see that this is just a less than symbol and not a less than or equal to. Based on the material provided by Project Maths, there was an and equal to given in that PowerPoint, so I would follow that and I'm going to give an and equal to. Um, my thinking behind this is it links very much to when we're talking about Z scores and with Z scores, we will generally have a less than or equal to as well. Um, it'll be negligible with regards less than or less than or equal to. With regards what has already been asked on the paper, they have shown both less than symbols and less than or equal to. So I can't imagine anybody being penalized for either. So just if you have this slightly different, that's absolutely fine, but I'm gonna to stick to the less than or equal to as we work through it. 
let's try an example. So we're going to work with the standard error of the means. So a light bulb manufacturer claims that the length of a life of its bulb has a mean of 16. So when I work in a question, the first thing I'm going to do is read my question and as I identify something, I will label it. So mean 16. Now note that they haven't said anything about a sample. So I'm just going to call that mu. Um, it has a standard deviation of three months, so that is standard deviation sigma. And an independent research company tests the sample of 60 bulbs, so that's N. Calculate an appropriate value for the standard deviation of the sample means. So that there, standard deviation of the sample means, it is not the standard deviation of the sample, it's the standard deviation of the sample means. And what that means for us is the standard error, so look at the words, of the sample means. So the only word that has changed there is they have changed the um, de standard deviation, the word deviation has been updated to error. So that's all they're asking for in this case. That's so the deviation has changed to error. So what we're looking for is go back to page uh, 34 and we have standard deviation of the sample, oh, standard deviation of the sample means, standard deviation all over root n. So that is the standard error of the mean or the standard deviation of the sample means is three all over square root of 60. And we can simplify that. And the calculator will obviously rationalize the denominator. And that is approximately equal to 0 0.387. So if you ever see that idea of standard deviation of the sample means, and you're thinking, oh, but we were told that standard deviation is the same. Yes, it is. But the standard deviation of the sample means, it's something very different. It's the standard area of the sample means. So now let's get into a confidence interval uh, calculation. So we're working with the population mean. And again, we're going to work through this question. And as we come across any information, um, we're going to label it. So a national newspaper reported in January 2010 that the average rent for a three bedroom house, three bedroom house in Ireland was 824 euro. So they've said average. We know that that is mu mean because they haven't mentioned anything about the sample. A Dublin estate agent conducted a survey, so straight away you should be thinking ding ding ding, we're now thinking oh we have a sample. So 40, that is my N, um, so a Dublin estate agent conducted a survey of 40 such properties in the greater Dublin area to see if the same was true. The estate agent had a mean of 1090, remember we're talking about a sample now, so the sample mean is X bar and a standard deviation of 480, so that is sigma. Okay, so using the estate agent sample, construct a 95% confidence interval for the mean monthly rent. So remember, it is X bar plus or minus 1.96, the standard error of the means. Less than or equal to mu, less than or equal to X bar plus 1.96, standard deviation all over root N. Now I'm going to pull out all my information. I have a mu. So mu is not going to be used in this case. As we work through hypothesis testing, we're going to understand why it's there. Sigma is 480 and n is equal to 40. So you get 1090 minus 1.96, 480 all over square root of 40, less than or equal to mu, less than or equal to 1090 plus 1.96, run out of space, 480 all over the square root of 40. So at this point, then, they can go into the calculator. We're talking money, so I would round two decimal places. So here we get 941.25. And over here we have 1238.75. So remember, I'm just going to highlight it here. Our sample mean was 1090, so we expect the band to be either side of that, which it is. So we can say with 95% confidence that 
the mean of the population sits somewhere between those two values. Now they told us that the claim was it was 824 euro and that doesn't sit in there. So that raises suspicion, but we'll talk about that in a bit more detail as we look at hypothesis testing. Let's look at another example of getting the 95% confidence interval for the population mean. A survey of 50 Leaving Cert students, so that's important. So as you're doing this, I would highlight everything and if possible, right above it what it is. So 50, that's the number of people. So straight away, ding, 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 we're talking about a sample. So there, a survey of 50 Leaving Cert candidates in 2014, randomly selected in the Dublin region, found that they had a mean mark of 374 and a standard deviation of 45. So because I'm talking about a sample, this is X bar and my 45 is my sigma. And they asked me, find the 95% confidence interval for the mean mark and the subject in the Dublin region and interpret this interval. Okay, so just like before, we set up our formula. So mu is in the middle, our population mean, and we know it's going to be X bar plus 1.96 standard deviation all over root N. And on this side, we're going to have X bar minus 1.96 standard deviation all over root n. So we into what we into our formula. So we know that we have 374 is our sample mean minus 1.96 standard deviation is 45 all over the square root of 50 less than or equal to mu less than or equal to 374 plus 1.96 standard deviation 45 all over the square root of 50. So let's work that out. And we're talking about points here. So I am not going to give any decimal base. I'm going to leave um, this correct to the nearest whole number, which is 362 on this side. And 386 on this side. So what does that mean? So this means we can say with 95% confidence that the mean mark for the whole Dublin region. So remember this sample was just about Dublin. So for the whole Dublin region lies between 362 and 386. So for the whole Dublin region, so our population in this case was the whole Dublin region. So that's what we were talking about. It was a sample from just the Dublin region. So that's what they would look for when we're talking about an interpretation or asking us to interpret the interval.